Now I want to give you an example of programming, what a program could look like for, you know, late beginners, intermediate, when they want to bench press twice a week, as I explained, and, you know, whether there is a strength cycle, just the one like I explained. This is really, you know, something for the average person. I'm not saying that this is the most perfect program. But this is an example of a pretty good programming optimized in a way that you will recover enough and that you will basically work on all your muscles and especially specialize in bench press, as I explained, by doing uh, the movement and chest sessions twice a week. So now I wanted to give you an example of a program where we could actually apply what I'm you know, talking about today, this uh, strength program, uh, this strength cycle. I want to give you an example for novices. So this program is not obviously something very uh, unique to the person, uh, like you know someone would do for example in a coaching program but for the average person uh, it's totally reasonable uh, you know it's a good template it's a good program uh, I guess to follow to improve uh, you're not doing uh, you know not enough and you're not uh, doing way too much for a novice at least I think um, so I'm going to explain to you uh, the reason behind uh, you know the, the days uh, that have you know uh, implemented in this in this training program why these days and why the rest in between basically the optimization the overall optimization of this program um, and then I'm gonna get into the program itself with the exercises what you could do uh, for each day and which exercises and you know a little explanation basically of um, this whole program so I've put chest twice a week as you know I suggested in this uh, strength program to follow um, basically, I said that there was seven uh, sessions basically before the strength cycle program ends, and so twice a week is a pretty good, um, pretty good pace basically to follow. Um, you know, this program is also made in a way that basically uh, you're gonna be able to, you know, train your chest twice a week uh, without being too tired, and and things are optimized. Uh, according basically to this strength um, chest cycle program um, so here I've put Monday chest and biceps Tuesday legs and abs Wednesday rest Thursday chest shoulders triceps Friday's rest and then Saturday back forearms and abs Sunday you rest again and then you restart basically your weekly program so the reason for putting chest uh, on Monday and Thursday you know, I give it two days rest between Monday and Thursday and then Thursday until the next Monday is uh, three days of rest between you do chest again. Um, so I've put on Thursday chest, shoulders and triceps together because obviously they're muscles that when you do chest, you're going to work out on your shoulders. I mean, you know, your shoulders are involved when you're doing chest. So putting them together is a good idea because if I was, for example, uh, putting, you know, chest on Thursday and the next day, shoulders then it's not very optimized well for you to recover if you're gonna hammer your chest on a thursday and then next day do shoulders when you've already uh you know involved your shoulders a lot in your chest exercises it's really not very intelligent to recover well so that's why i put shoulders with chest and this is also why i put triceps with chest and shoulders and uh, especially with uh, chest uh, and actually as i'm talking right now uh, I've put you know chest triceps and shoulder uh, instead of actually chest shoulders and triceps I've put it in that order uh, but we'll get back to it later um, so and I also want to put triceps on Thursday uh, because it gives you three days of rest before your next chest session and as I explained you know uh, triceps in my opinion uh, if you were to do triceps the day before you do chest, it would be impossible to train chest properly because your triceps are so involved in chest uh, that, you know, you would just kill yourself, really. So I've put triceps with chest just because, as I said, also when you do your chest, your triceps are really involved. So uh, putting chest, shoulders and triceps is, in my opinion, a smart idea. Um, you know, most people, novices, when they have to uh if you don't want to do a full body or this kind of programs but uh, you still have you know to gather some muscles together this is a great example of what muscles to gather uh to put together really so 
And uh, if we go back to Monday, chest and biceps, you know, why not? Uh, I don't see why these two muscles can't be worked out together. When you do your chest, you don't really work on your biceps. And when you do biceps, you don't really work on your chest. But, you know, uh, that's not a problem, really. And we had to put, you know, biceps somewhere. Uh, so, you know, with chest, I think it's a good idea. Um, you'll also be able to really be focused on your biceps uh, after your chest because because you you know, as you don't really work uh, and you don't tire your biceps at all when you do your chest exercises, then you'll have fresh biceps. It's not like if you're doing back and biceps and for example, you had your biceps tired after back and, and you're not really focused on your biceps as, mu as much as you could. So I think chest and biceps, you know, uh, as I explained, chest, shoulders and triceps are very interesting because they all go together, but there is also something interesting in uh, gathering muscle that aren't, you know, uh, competing with each other at all. So here, chest and biceps, I think is also interesting. Uh, then Tuesday, I wanted to give the legs and abs. Uh, you know, I think a leg day is already quite tiring enough. So, you know, having just legs to do uh, is, you know, good goal in itself. And, you know, some abs after won't kill you. Uh, I think legs and abs is, uh, uh, you know, a good idea basically. And, you know, after your chest and biceps session on Monday, you know, I don't see any issues with doing legs the next day. You won't be tired for your legs. Um, and after on Wednesday, you know, you rest. You give yourself a little rest before your next chest, shoulders and tricep session. Uh, then Friday, you give yourself a rest again before uh, one pretty big, obviously, muscle, which is back. So I think it's why it was interesting also to surround this back day in between two rest days. And, uh, you know, forearms, I think it's interesting to do forearms. Uh, I know a lot of people don't do it because they do biceps and, you know, doing back exercises, they don't really feel the need to do forearms. But in my opinion, uh, for, for good forearms look good, look good. So, you know, why not do forearms with back? It goes pretty well together. Um, and then after you can do abs again if you feel like it. So now we're going to go inside the program. I'm going to explain to you basically what kind of exercises I've put in together. So on Monday for this chest and bicep session, I've put uh, the strength, you know, chest cycle. Uh, and then I've put dips uh, for four sets. I think dips is a you know, very interesting exercise. And as well, when I was talking about getting your triceps uh, to strengthen, then I think it's interesting to uh, add, you know, an exercise like dips where you all work a bit on your uh, triceps at the same time you're doing your chest session uh, before the next chest session which will involve your triceps and uh, some flies after I think it's a good exercise to really uh, an isolation exercise uh, where you really you know stretch your chest it's an incredible exercise uh, I really like it so I think it's a good uh, addition um, to your strengths uh, program you know cycle then uh, we go on to biceps. I think incline, incline curls is a good exercise. Uh, I think it's you know it's a good isolation exercise and uh, really stretch the biceps. So uh, it's it's always paid off for me, and I think it pays off for most people. And then pull ups for four sets, uh, great exercise as well. Uh, supinated grip, obviously, and then some hammer curls for the brachialis. Uh, then on Tuesday, we keep it simple: some squats. Uh, you know, you could follow strength cycle as well if you wish on your squats. Um, and then some Bulgarian split squats to work on your glutes, your hamstrings. Um, it's a great exercise that will <laughs> make you want to puke. Um, and then legs extension, you know, for some quads, although you could replace it maybe by another exercise for your quads. Uh, legs extensions, I do like it. Uh, I think if you put yourself in, you know, in a, in a position when you're sat down that you you know, you're really trying to go full ra range of motion where you really try to stretch the quads, then it still remains a great exercise. Um, and then, you know, some calves because you have to do calves. Calves are important. Um, and so at the end, you can do some abs. I'm not giving specific exercises for abs. So I'll, I'll give later on, uh, on the Saturday day and you can do the same on Tuesday. So then Wednesday rest. Uh, Thursday, we keep it the same basically or almost the same you know the upper flies are a bit different from normal flies i guess for the upper chest but we really keep it the same exercises that's why i explain you know sticking to your routine is important 
you know, if you stick to the same exercises, you're going to improve, uh, become a specialist of the exercises, and you're going to improve faster, build muscle faster, strength and, and muscle. So that's why in my programs, if you see your chest day, usually the second chest day is going to be the same as the first one. Um, and maybe some variations, maybe to target, you know, different angles, but within the same exercises, which is what I've done here is flies. Um, so, you know, you do your uh, strength cycle for the first exercise, and then you do dips again, uh, because as well, you're going to you know, work on your triceps after. So it's a good way to warm them up, actually, when doing your chest. Uh, and then you do upper flies, you know, target the upper area of um, the chest that you don't exactly do on Monday. And, you know, I'd advise you to go, you know, pretty high reps, try to really focus. It's already hard to feel the upper chest as a natural. So go high reps, try to fill this uh, zone, uh, this area. And then, you know, later on with experience, you'll be able to go heavier for upper chest. And actually, I think take advantage and uh, really fully enjoy this exercise. Um, then, you know, close grip bench press. I think that, as I said, you're specializing even more in the bench press, um, which is great by doing some close grip bench press as a transition to your triceps exercise size go for higher reps though uh, you've already done you know your strength work of the day uh, so here you know the goal is really just to focus on your triceps and work on your technique on the bench press technique and become an even better uh, bench press uh, amateur basically uh, then you know some school crushes because it's a great stretching exercise for the triceps warm up yourself well obviously uh, try to go pretty heavy and then finish with triceps extensions, uh, pretty high reps, you know, try to focus on your triceps. And then I give lateral raises for shoulders, no pressing because you do already so much pressing with this clo close grip bench press and, you know, the strength cycle, which is um, pretty tough, you know, on the joints and, you know, you don't want to do too much pressing. And I think for uh, shoulders now, uh, maybe later on you'll do some, uh, you know, overhead press uh, in your uh, body pulling journey. But for now, focus on lateral raises. Uh, great exercise. So I give more sets basically to lateral raises because you don't have any pressing, etc. And because that's the only thing you do for shoulders, I put more sets there. You specialize into lateral raises, you'll become great at it. And you'll, uh, you know, improve faster, build muscle faster uh, on a great exercise, literally, for your side delt. And then some rear delts raises because, you know, rear delts are so important to keep the balance. Um, and so three, four sets. Then on Friday, you can rest. And then Saturday, you do some deadlift. I think it's a great exercise to do some uh, legs as well, which you only do once a week. Um, you only do them once a week. So, you know, some deadlift is interesting because you involve your legs. And uh, it's a good compound exercise to put on strength, to, to gain strength, which will then transfer to some, you know, hypertrophy exercises. Uh, then we'll do some pull-ups. Just, you know, we, stay on, we stick to basics, basically, the best basics exercises that bodybuilding has to offer and focus on them. And that's really what matters, basics, you know. Um, and then rows, great exercise as well, where you can go either pretty heavy and then go for more hypertrophy sets, uh, you know, higher reps. So wrist curls then, you know, we're not going to do too much wrist curls, uh, you know, you're a beginner or you're a novice, so we're just going to focus on uh, starting to implement uh, forearms, you know, in your workouts, but we're not going to do uh, extreme, you know, sessions where you do 20 sets of wrist curls, no point, let's only stick to four sets for now. And then, you know, some examples of what you could do for abs, heavy crunches, very basic, but good. Uh, you can add some weight as well on your torso if you're comfortable uh, to, you know, progressive overload over time. Some oblique crunches for the obliques uh, and then some leg raises for the, I guess, uh, lower ab, you know, area uh, if there was such a thing. So then on Saturday you rest and uh, that's pretty much it. Now some last tips for you, things that, you know, will make you improve following all these advices that I give you is to stick to your routine. Sticking to your routine offers you landmarks. We're putting all these exercises that I just presented you in a certain order because we care about progress, we care about measuring and because you do you know, these things in the same order, you're always in the same conditions. It's easy to measure, it's easy to see you know, last time that you did the reps for example on the dips or on the bench press that you did this exact amount because it's always in the same order, it's always the same conditions. And so the next time that you improve, you really know that you've improved. You really know when you've done that extra rep uh, that you couldn't do last time, etc. Also, just train and be patient. Now this is we're gonna enter the phase of people that you know reach a plateau 
and change the routine because they don't see it working anymore. So this is more the answer that I can bring to the person in the Q&A that was asking how to bench break plateaus. Well, I've already given you know, a lot of tips basically to keep improving on bench press, but here what I give you is that if your routine is well optimized like we just saw, that you're following every factor that I presented you like nutrition, etc. There will be times where you will slow down and plateau, but if you push through, you should keep improving. Don't change your routine like so many people do. They keep changing their routine as soon as they stall for two weeks or three weeks. Man, you might, you know, plateau for two months, literally. And at some point, all of a sudden, you will add a few kg on your bench because you've been pushing through this good routine that you've been following and that you've been following your nutrition aspect. So you have sometimes to, you know, just push through the plateau. Even if it gets hard, just carry on. So the tips for those who are uh, you know, going to a plateau, the first thing that you can do is to make sure that your routine you're following until now is actually good and you're progressing with it. If your routine, second, if your routine has no issues, focus on recovery, food, sleep, you know, stress control, getting enough rest days. Uh, I insist really on the food part. It will usually come from a lack of calories. And then the third is to be patient. Expect these slow phases, keep pushing, take a deload week if it's because you're literally exhausted and doing too much. Not only, you know, the gym, but you have a lifestyle that is too much and you actually can't keep up with it. Then, you know, take a deload or uh, actually optimize your program better and then restart your strength cycle and come back stronger. To finish, I want to give you some hope for the people that are starting skinny. How long will it take you to bench this 225 bench press if you're someone who starts skinny like I was? Well, I will give you my experience. It took me around a year and a half, two years to reach the 100 kg bench press because I started really skinny and at a low level. And I would consider two years pretty damn good, even though some people, as I said, with a better starting point will get there faster. But with these tips that I just gave you, I think that you could reach faster than a year and a half or two years of training. You could actually do this in one year if you do things very well or a year and a half. Let me tell you, 100 kg after a year or a year and a half of training is very good if you're starting from a skinny place. And now I'm just gonna give you indications for everyone that is watching this video of how long it will basically take you to reach two plates, three plates, four plates. So I think that you can reach, you know, from someone who basically starts very skinny and wants to, you know, specialize in bench pressing as a bodybuilder, you could reach the 100 kg bench press after a year to two years. Then if you want to reach 120 kg on the bench press, I think that three to four years is, you know, what usually happens for the person that is quite invested in his training, etc. Four to six years to reach uh, a 140 bench press, uh, even maybe 150. And then six to eight years to reach, you know, a 160 kg bench press to 180 kg bench press. It took me myself seven years and a half, eight years to reach 180 kg on the bench press. I think after, you know, six years, I was at 160. Uh, the 140, I was there after five years. Uh, and, and, you know, it went pretty quick afterwards because I really started to specialize in trend bench press like crazy. But basically, these are pretty good indications of what you can reach as a natural bodybuilder for your bench press over time. If we go back to the case of someone who is pretty short in height and doesn't weigh much even though you've built a good amount of muscle well as i said it might take simply longer to reach you know 100 kg bench or to reach a 120 kg bench and these indications that i gave might not be the most optimal it might take you a bit more time you know reach 100 kg might take you three or four years but if you're you know uh, in height you're someone that is five foot six or something like this then this is more normal and a 100 kg bench 120 is very impressive for the amount of weight that you weigh. I used, I used to basically look at the next goal without really enjoying the one that was presented to me. So really try to enjoy your journey, enjoy every moment each time you reach, you know, a new milestone like the 100 kg, really take time, you know, to enjoy it and be like, well, I'm improving quite fast. Uh, don't try to think about, you know, 200 kg straight away. Try to also enjoy a bit, you know, the moment and the journey that you're doing. Because I used to basically bench 100 and think that would be you know, complete in my journey with this. And then next thing you know, I was 120 and then I wanted more, 140, etc. So uh, don't fall into too much of this stress, you know, mind 
and uh, into Bigorexia, you can also just try to enjoy, at least even if it's not easy, to try to enjoy the journey as it is at the moment. And then, uh, don't worry, you will reach that three plates or four plates one day if you keep going at it. Also, take pictures and videos of you know all these PBs that you're doing. You won't regret looking at them later on the years. You know, I've never filmed 100 kg. I took a picture or something, but I never filmed it. I've never filmed 100 kg or the, you know, three plates. And this is something that you might want to do if one day you have a transformation video that you want to post out there or just look, look at it back, you know, take shots of the moments like this uh, to see your progression over time. Does it ever get harder after you reach this 100 kg, you know, uh, phase, etc.? Well, yes, it does get a bit harder and you have to involve uh, more of your time into the practice of bodybuilding and like I said specialize into benching even more optimize your program as much as you can to keep progressing and I actually never really slow down in my progress by doing this so basically I would put you know 10 to 20 kg on my bench every year even after six years of training but that's because I was ready to you know put the work in and actually do chest sessions who will last you know three to four hours and really work out to improve quickly that's you know the way to basically keep improving quickly is to be more optimized in your training, uh, to really specialize more in the things that matters to you. But then obviously not everyone has to train this much to keep progressing. It's just that I wanted to keep progressing fast. This is why I kept training, you know, three hours a day, three, four hours sometimes and optimize things very well. It's because I really wanted to keep improving fast, just like I did in my first years of training. But then if you want to take it slower because you want, you know, to do other things in life and gym is not totally your uh, number one thing then you will keep improving it might just be slower uh, you know what you could do in 10 years might take 15 years but at the end of the day if you're doing what you want uh, in life and you're where you're at then this is what matters right otherwise take it easy playing on the long term things will be fine either way so that's the end of this video guys i hope it wasn't too long it was actually pretty long to do but you know if you've watched it all i think that there is some great tips in there that will help you progress faster the most important you know, if you're plateauing or stagnating a bit, please carry on. If your you know, routine is good, etc., and that you're doing everything that is well already, don't you know, change your routine because it's not going the way you want straight away. Sometimes it, will, it's not, it won't be linear. It will take one more or two to finally break you know, that bench plateau. It's always like this, you know, you know, all of a sudden you improve and then you go through a phase that is a bit slower, slower, and then you improve again. It goes like that. So take your time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. If you have questions for the next video that I could make like this one, feel free to leave in the comments. And I will see you next time. Give it a like. Thank you.